exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by the Odyssey from Honda. It carries everything but the minivan stigma. The two winningest programs in the history of men's college basketball meet up here today at the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill. Number 18, Kentucky, and number 14, North Carolina. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, and Jay Billis with you here at a packed Dean Dome here on this Saturday afternoon. And time for the star watch. Jawad Williams has taken his game up a notch now as a sophomore. And Keith Bogans, Dick, bouncing back from a tough junior season. Well, you know, Keith Bogans right now is attacking the basket a lot better than he did. He's going back to his ways as his freshman year as a diaper dandy as you take a look at Bogans. They have to have a big game out of Bogans to have the opportunity to win here today in Chapel Hill. The major moments early in this season for Jawad Williams and the North Carolina Tar Heels winning the preseason NIT including a convincing win over Kansas. Kentucky went out to Maui, finished third, a loss to Virginia out there. Kentucky's got more size with Jules Kamara and Marquis Estel both starting for Tubby Smith today. North Carolina, three freshmen, but they're all outstanding. Well, you know, the storyline and the theme in this game is going to be psychologically, can North Carolina recover after being beaten by 27 by Illinois? Remember, the psychic of young players yep. is very fragile sometimes, so watch that theory. Third meeting in as many years between Carolina and Kentucky. All-time Carolina leads the series 16-8, to but it's the Cats with the opening possession of the game. Jared Fitch playing out on the perimeter right now, playing without Cliff Hawkins out academically. He's normally their point guard. Estill dumps it inside. The big men shared the ball beautifully in Kentucky's last game, but they don't get it done there. Jawad Williams creates a little space, but he's called for the offensive foul. Little difference, though. Tubby Smith, as you look at Tubby, he beat his alma mater in the last game. That was high point. Now they got to be able to do it in this game against Mr. Doherty's club. That Doherty feels so good about his young players. You saw 8 and 20 last season, but off to a 5 and 1 start already this year. If you haven't seen Sean May, Rashad McCanns, and Raymond Felton, you're in for a treat here this afternoon. Kamara looking high low to Estill. This was huge for Kentucky in their last game, but they're going to call it off. Yes, sir. Good call by the official. Internationally, that would count, right. but it certainly doesn't count here. You're not allowed to interfere with the ball up on that cylinder. You can see the game plan early, though, for Kentucky. They want to go high low with those big guys. Get inside. Yeah, they want to take advantage on the interior. And that was a concern to Matt Doherty. The speed by Felton misses the jumper. Jackie Manuel tries to make the extra pass inside to May. Jackie Manuel, outstanding defensive player, Jay. I'll tell you, Manuel has stepped up as a defender, Jay Billis. He really has, and that's been the difference in this team, Dick. From last year, the Tar Heels shot 45% from the, uh, from the field. They allowed their opponents to shoot 45%. That was last in the ACC. This year, there's a completely different attitude, more quickness, more athleticism. They're trapping, and they're holding their opponents to 37% from the field. That is a huge difference in this team. May has his shot blocked. Williams the miss as the Tar Heels are getting on the glass. And Jay, while we're breaking down numbers, North Carolina's been out-rebounded in each of their last four games. They've got the worst offense, the lowest scoring average yeah. in the ACC, but they're 5-1. and one. How big is the glass here today, Dick? Well, it's very important now. Obviously, they need a big game on the glass of May. May's got to be active on the inside. He's an old-school type player who understands and has great basketball IQ. Reason dad was player of the year at Indiana, Scott May. McCants cheating nice down cut. to help out. Estel finds Hayes for the first bucket of the game. Estel to Hayes. Hayes showing an art of moving without the basketball. One of the lost concepts in college hoops. Hayes moving to the small forward position with Kamara now into the starting lineup. Kentucky big the last couple of games. Tough one for McCants, and Kamara comes up with a rebound. Shot selection so important. A lot of times young kids don't understand the concept of shot selection. That was a bad shot by Rashad McCants. And that was, that was their problem, Dan, against Illinois at the end of that game. Bogans misses the three. It's something he has been doing a lot better this year, shooting the three. Could be a great matchup, McCants and Bogans. Maybe Manuel covering Bogans at the other end as the Tar Heels turn it over. Size inside could be a factor all day for North Carolina because it's good size. It's not just guys that aren't agile when you talk Esto and you talk Kamara. Here's Esto again, doubling down on him. May 
comes down to the weak side rebound. May's going to be vital. He's got to stay out of foul trouble for North Carolina today. He's a good position rebounder. Launches a three. What a rebound by Manuel, and the foul is called on Jules Kamara. Kamara with the foul against Gonzaga and certainly against Virginia. The problem was foul trouble for Estel and shooting the basketball against Virginia. They were 0 for 16 shooting threes. As you look at the team leaders right here, Bogan's having a big year. Has moved up on the charts. As you look at him at 3 and 1, third in Maui. He's moved up on the all time charts in Kentucky in yep. scoring. Could wind up uh, near or maybe within the top five all time at Kentucky. Isn't that incredible? It is, you really think is. about all the negative publicity he received for his sophomore and junior year, and yet to be possibly in the top five all time with all that tradition and history. Early seven out for the Tar Heels as Sean May comes out, and Byron Sanders goes into the game, a 6'9 freshman from Gulfport, Mississippi, a banger, a defender. And again, Carolina is very good, very athletic, but they are not very deep with the big guys, and Kentucky's got a lot of big guys they can throw at North Carolina. Well, you see, Kentucky wants to keep that crowd quiet. They don't want the explosive transition dunk by a McCants or a manual. Playing patient, executing their half-court game. Bogans takes it inside, gets the bounce, and it's 4 to nothing, Kentucky. See, that's what he did so well as a type of dandy. He attacked the basket. Chuck Hayes has called for the foul. Let's take a look at what North Carolina has done to date this season. Of course, they made it to New York and then won in New York, winning the Owens Corning preseason NIT championship. Rashad McCants was the MVP of that tournament. A freshman leads in scoring, a freshman leads in rebounding, and a freshman leads in assists. Well, we've had so many freshmen stand out from day one. Bogans forces the turnover, gets the pass back, and lays it home again, and it's all Kentucky early. He told me in the lobby last night at the hotel that I'm back to my driving game, and you can see it here early in this contest. That's what he does exceptionally well, go to the basket with the basketball. And here's McCants at the other end trying to make something happen. Sanders no. And here comes Kentucky again. North Carolina out of sync offensively against a good, tough Kentucky defense early. Hayes with a spin, and he draws the foul inside on Jawad Williams. Hayes is one of those warriors. He attacks the basket. He's an aggressive, hard-nosed young guy. Number two on Jawad Williams. That could be a big problem for Carolina. Sean May and Will Johnson are both getting ready to sub in. Well, they're not a very deep basketball yeah. team. That's the one dilemma for Matt Doherty's club. They played a little like fairly tough. I mean, it was 42-40 with 17 minutes to go. It was an eight-point game with about six minutes to go. And then it got out of hand. He said, hey, he told us today, sitting with them. He said, we start to revert back to playing street basketball. Right. Shot selection was horrendous. He did a great job, he and his staff, recruiting those three diaper dandies. You know, in the long run, it might be, you never like to lose, but as you said to him in his office today, hey, he got their attention back. All of a sudden, they know they're not invincible, and down 8 nothing here to Kentucky early. That message is being driven home again. That was probably the worst beating that a lot of those kids have ever taken yeah. in their life when you talk to McCants, Felton. They're, they're meeting that zone right now, and they're going to have to make shots. It slows them down with the zone. Felton floater is good, and better than four minutes into the game, the Tar Heels finally score. I think they're going to see a lot of zones this year to negate their one-on-one -on -one ability and their quickness. Fitch inside draws the foul. Carolina right now has gone with as big a lineup as they have used at any point of the season to, Jay, maybe try to counteract some of that big size, that all that size that Kentucky has. Well, that's exactly what they want to do because Kentucky wants to get into a high-low game. They run a high screen and try to get Kamara and Estel into position where they can look for each other. And Kentucky, a very good rebounding team. Not a great rebounding team, but a good rebounding team, especially with their guards because they've got big wings. They can get to the glass not only with Bogans but with Chuck Hayes. So the glass is going to be very important. Today. We'll step aside a timeout. A seven point lead for Kentucky as we step away. Power inside, but boy, what a mess it was outside. We'll tell you about that when we come back. Back in Chapel Hill, Kentucky leads North Carolina 9 to 2. And I'm going to put on my 
meteorologist hat right now. As much as this game has been anticipated, there's been a distraction in the greater North Carolina area all across the state. There was an ice storm earlier this week. 1.5 million people across the state have been without power. Power lines have been down by trees that have been falling under the weight of the ice, and it's been a very difficult situation all over the state, whether it's in Charlotte, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. People have been without power, and it has been a dangerous situation for some people. Others are just trying to hunker down and get through it. Even the coaches of uh, the North Carolina team has been affected. Matt Doherty's family does have power, but assistant coach Doug Rojic has been hunkering down with his family in front of the fire all week, guys. And I know you were without power. You and your beautiful bride, Wendy, who's here. A nice rebound by Mr. May. Hey, Jay, I didn't know you were out Roper, baby. Al Roper, giving us the weather. Anything I can do to help, Dick. <laughs> Well, and the power is even out here at the Dean Dome a couple of days ago for a few hours. The first time that has ever happened. But fortunately, they got the power back, and we've got this game going on here. That's good news so far for Kentucky. That's Eric Daniels just back from a four-game suspension with the rebound, knocking home his first points. There's Will Johnson, the shooter from the corner. And now Carolina's starting to pick up the offense. Will Johnson with that trifecta. Will Johnson, an outstanding student academically. On an academic scholarship, so actually... From a basketball point of view, he's a walk-on. 11-7 early for Kentucky. Bogan steps behind the screen, misses the three, and another rebound for May. I love the way he gets positioned, May inside. Watch this kid. He can shake and bake. He's just got a nice little kick out. Contact, no foul. Johnson with a strong move, blocked by Daniels. Two good plays by Daniels in his first minute into the game. Little volleyball in the corner. And then the officials are going to keep the ball at this end of the floor. Look at Tubby. Tubby can't believe the call. This is right in front of our bench. Come on. He goes, Duke Gatso. Come on, Duke. Look at the intensity, the emotion. Toughest job in America, my friends. The toughest coaching job in America, coaching basketball at the University of Kentucky, where you're scrutinized and evaluated after every performance. Last year, 22 and 10, made it to the Sweet 16, lost to the eventual national champs in Maryland, and people are wondering what's wrong with the program and what's wrong with Tubby. Exactly. It, Johnson from the other side misses this three in the loose ball to Kentucky. They got Johnson on the floor to give him a perimeter shooter against that zone. You can see the success that Kentucky has had not only in the last eight years. I mean, let's talk about a this is the hundredth year, the 100th season of Kentucky basketball, the winningest program all time, both in terms of number of wins and winning percentage. Final fours, NCAA tournaments, championships, they're right up there among the very best, along with Carolina. Yet, as you say, the fans never seem to be quite happy. Well, they're only happy to your most recent performance. <laughs> they play well here today, and I'll be. On cloud nine, you talk about Tubby, five years, 132 wins in his five years, four SEC regular titles, three conference titles, a national title, and a lead eight. I mean, it's unbelievable. Tomorrow night, Rich Davis, Trev Alberts, and Mark May have the first breakdown and analysis of each and every bowl game, the College Game Day Bowl Selection Special, presented by Outback. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. One Dick Vitao is going to be watching to see where the Irish football team oh, is headed. Wow. Huh? Looks like a heading out to the Gator Bowl unless Washington State were to get beat by UCLA. Hey, I'll tell you this right now. When you think about Tubby, I was looking at those numbers. Dan, 132 wins in five years, four SEC titles, a national championship. If you have that kind of success in most places, they build a monument That's on right. campus they, for they, you. They name the court after you. Yeah. <laughs> Fell in the lose, Fitch, now a switch, and Kamara's on him. We've got Kalena Azabuki into the game, but forget about that for a minute. May is having himself a big start here today. I'll tell you, he's got great hands. Reminds me of our producer, Kim Belton, when he played at Stanford. Here's Daniels, the lefty, and which way is it going to go? Offensive foul is the call on Eric Daniels. Eric Daniels trying to show aggressive play going to the basket. Watch May inside here. Watch him right here. He's going to pop out. That's May right here. And take the ball right to the gap. I mean, he does a great job, and then he comes back on a defensive end, and he's going to step out, and he's going to take right here as the little kick. I'll tell you one thing, May is a heck of a tower. Jammed by McCants on the feed from Felton, and the Tar Heel faithful are on their feet. And that's how you get momentum on your side. A little jam. Felton's all fired up. The Carolina faithful are all fired up. I got goosebumps. It's Kentucky. It's Carolina. Oh! I can't believe it when I see those jerseys. Wide open.
open look for Fitch from three, and he knocks it down to quiet the crowd. You know what Fitch is doing a really good job? Playing with poise and patience. And usually if you play with poise and patience, it leads to points. The three teammates. That's right. Seven for Fitch. Six-point lead now for the Cats. There's that zone. They're playing multiple defenses, trying to match up out of the zone because they want to neutralize the one-on-one -on -one ability of Felton and McCants. David Noel into the game now for North Carolina. Also Melvin Scott. You've got four freshmen and a sophomore on the floor for Carolina right now. May, two more. I tell you, he's sweet. He's got touch. He doesn't do it in spectacular style. He just has the great instincts and understanding of how to play, and he's an excellent position player. Six points and six rebounds already for Sean May. Azabuki off the screen, and here comes Kentucky, not noted as a great outside shooting team, but they're knocking down some threes here early. Excellent down screen for Azabuki, who averaged 39 a game. He's going to be a star at Kentucky. He's an offensive producer. Melvin Scott playing with so much more confidence this year than last year. Well, he did a great job coming off the bench against Kansas with seven big points in the first half. Remember, this team put the hurt on the Jayhawks big time. Had them down 23. Kentucky 20, North Carolina 15, 11-18 to go in the first half. Jules Kamara, line drive miss. Tar Heels on the run. McCants on the wing. That's when he's at his best, usually in transition. Gonna count it. Count the bucket. Count it. Yep. Yes, sir. Gonna count it. Joe with the drill with the call. But Kansas is at his best in transition. He's the elevator man. He's a high riser. Up, up, and away. Yes, sir. Mr. McCants with a little jab. Look at him rise. Just like my partner, Dan Schumann. Illinois, Arkansas, Dan, great game. Right now, 57-56, the Illini. Augustine, down low, made it 59-56. It's 60-58 with 1.9 to play. Arkansas had the ball, threw it away. Meantime, Texas in a real close one against Carl Hobbs' GW team. 48-47. We'll keep you posted, guys. Anybody can beat anybody this year. Here we've got Kentucky and North Carolina. As we mentioned, the two winningest programs in the history of college basketball. The 25th time that they have met all time. First time back in 1924 last year, Tayshawn Prince had a huge game as Kentucky won. Were you there in 24 to see that game? I don't think game? so. <laughs> hey, I wasn't even there then, but I saw the game on TV when Tayshawn Prince went wild, knocked down six threes to start that game, now playing with the Pistons. Mr. Versatility. More subs in the game for both teams. Jonathan Holmes for Carolina. Brandon Stockton, a freshman point guard. Damian Grant, a big guy, diving on the floor. Number 25, a freshman out of Jamaica. We talked to Matt Doherty about him. He hadn't really used him yet this year. He's huge, but the basketball is very raw right now. Well, Matt Doherty told us that he's really only played basketball for two years. He's trying to get some size between guys like Sanders and, and certainly the big fella Grant, as you look at the makeup, they got the youngest team in America in their starting five, but they're trying to get some size on the floor with Grant and Sanders, and they just want him to be able to rebound, screen a little bit. Both coaches have gone deep into their benches already here today, maybe because of the pace. It has really been up and down so far. This is Stockton, just 5'9 out of Glasgow, Kentucky, but again with... Hawkins out for the first semester academically. They need a little bit of support, a little bit of depth at the point guard spot. Jump hook tomorrow, way too long. Rebound McCants out in transition again. He's at his best when he's going the length of the court in transition. Doesn't force anything, finds Holmes for three. That's a great pass by McCants and the stationary shot by Holmes. He came from Bloomington South where his dad coach. May is from Bloomington North out in Indiana. We saw the Hoosiers, nice backdoor cut. Bogans. And a foul on the floor. You know, two years ago, Matt Doherty lost here, 93-76 to Kentucky. He apologized to the fans, the students, and everybody with their performance. And then he won 18 in a row after the loss to Tubby Smith. Illinois wins again. Matt Doherty knows firsthand about Bill Self's Illini as they beat him 92-65 on Tuesday. Outstanding guard day out of D. Brown. Read a great article by Jay Mariotti in the Chicago Sometimes you wrote about the energy that he brings to that Illinois program and Matt Darney told us before the game He said his personality becomes contagious to their team second foul on Grant who's only been in the game a couple of minutes Tied at 20 midway point of the first half 
Now let's bring in Jay Billis. Jay, from this Carolina team, we're seeing some guys we didn't expect to see this early. Are you surprised to see them in? Well, Matt Doherty's trying to steal some minutes right now and keep some of his starters fresh. Early on, you can put some of these players in, like Damian Grant. He can do a good job by trying to stay big inside. He's gotten a couple of fouls. He needs to play defense with his feet instead of with his hands. Bogans off to Esto. He's a key for Kentucky. Bogans again, and he knocks down another one. Boy, this guy looks like he did in his sophomore year, not last year. Well, he looks like a different player. There's no doubt. You mean his freshman year. He had a down yeah. second yeah. year. His freshman year, he was outstanding. Played in high school with Jay Corte. What a drive on the baseline by as confident looking a kid, I would think, as you've seen in many, many years. Oh, there's no doubt. He has an air of confidence about his game that elevates everybody around him. As you take a look right here, we're going to watch the jump shot by Bogans, showing that confidence that he has this year in his senior year, having a solid senior start. And I really wish him the best because he was so heavily criticized in his second and third year. Hey, Jay, I see a different player in Keith Bogans. Do you? Absolutely. And I think the difference is that he's really given up on his jump shot being his main weapon. Now he's using it as a counter. He's taking the ball to the basket. One of the measures of how aggressive he is is he's getting to the free throw line more often. That's usually a measure of putting it on the floor and attacking the goal. Well, you know why, Jay? I think he was trying to please the NBA scouts because the word was questionable range. And I think sometimes guys get away from their strengths and they play to their weaknesses. That's exactly right. And he was trying to shoot himself out of a slump rather than getting something easy and I think it built on itself and his confidence really took a hit but this year he's been a much more confident player because primarily as you mentioned he's been taking the ball to the basket first and foremost well and with Tayshawn Prince gone they need a guy to step up as a score they need somebody as a senior now to show some leadership get all this team turmoil stuff from last year behind and start focusing on winning basketball again. it was as the world of Toby <laughs> Tubby spins last year it was one problem after another Marvin Stone transfer, Jason Parker went to South Carolina, who originally committed to North Carolina and went to Kentucky. They thought he'd be his power guy inside, but then had a knee injury. Rashad Carruth transferred. Zone look here for the Wildcats, and McCants might be a zone buster here today. That's what makes him special, Dan, his ability to make the perimeter shot as well as his ability to get to the rack. Rashad McCants already with nine. Carolina back up by two, and now they've got a turnover. He gives them such a spark, McCann's. He's their spark. He's their guy that gives them electricity. Noel inside. Off to May. Well, the offensive rebounding effort has been very strong by Carolina, but it's off the hands of Noel out of bounds. We have not seen the real Noel. They say in the workouts he was sensational. And you ready for this? Kenny Smith, one of the best point guards ever to play here, left a voicemail, the best message yesterday for Matt Doherty, talking about David Noel, that he wanted to play to him. He said, hey, I watched him in the summer. He's as good as any of those type of dandies. This Kenny Smith trying to coach. <laughs> I mean, wow, I didn't forget anything left after working with Charles Roundmount rebound. <laughs> There's Kamara. He draws the crowd. Shot clock down to 12. Very active on the defensive end right now, North Carolina. Kamara with May on his back, and a push is the call. Going to go against Carolina. Gerald Boudreau making the unpopular call here in Chapel Hill. We've had a great start to this game with North Carolina at 5-1, leading Kentucky at 3-1 by a couple of points. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, and Jay Billis with you inside. Sold out and noisy. The Dean Dome here today. The offensive rebounding numbers. Impressive for Carolina. And Jay, you were here yesterday at practice when Matt Doherty walked out into the middle of his players and he said, hey, the opponents have 98 offensive rebounds this year, and we only have 63. That was one of his points of emphasis in the practice yesterday. Looks like the kids were listening. I'll tell you one thing, whenever you offensive rebound, Dad, that's one of the areas that means you're playing aggressive basketball. And when you're being dominated on that, as you look at the Crosstown shootout coming up, Xavier and Cincinnati, and then Arizona, Bill Walton's going to do that that's game. Right. San Diego State. <laughs> yes, sir, his son is redshirting down there at San Diego State, but they got good news. Evan Burns is eligible, who originally committed to UCLA, and Steve Fisher needs some help. That Xavier-Cincinnati game is always one of the most hotly contested games of the season. I I think even if Steve Fisher dressed up Bill Walton, I think they'd be in trouble with Arizona. <laughs> We've got a great one going here, all tied up in Chapel Hill.
After a three-pointer by GW, made it a three-point game. Texas came down the other end of the floor. Iso for TJ Ford. Goes baseline. Defense sloughs off. He knocks down the jumper. He's getting hot. It's a five-point game. Still 13 minutes to go. Meanwhile, here we are dead even at 25, 7 to 57 to play in the first half between the two winningest programs in the history of college basketball, Kentucky and North Carolina. Tubby Smith cut down the nets in his first year as head coach at Kentucky. He's led them to the Sweet 16 four or five years. Uh, tell us a little bit as we take some of the numbers here. Kentucky shooting the ball very well, especially from outside. Carolina getting on the glass, keeping them in the game. Talk a little bit about Tubby Smith and what he's done and the expectations in Lexington. Well, the expectations there are on real so many times they really get carried away there's a nice little kick out oh well, well, they, with the finish. Finish. they know how to finish off the conversion after the steal they take that turnover to transition way up off the turnover that one's going to be one of the magical point guards here in his career certainly the best of the best we saw it today we That's talked right. to Phil Ford what a nice man too he gets embarrassed when I told him he's the best point guard ever watched in college basketball but you know, you were talking about Tubby Smith. I really think it's a shame. I was with all the media in the media room before the game, and a lot of the media from out of Kentucky, they're all wondering, is he going to leave after this year? People are upset, frustrated, three consecutive years, losing 10 games or more. That's a deceiving stat. They're playing so many more games, and he has done such a great job. I told Rick Bosick and John Clayton here, they're all going to be sad if that guy leaves because he can flat out coach. He can coach. And so can this kid score as a yeah, right now these kids can flat out shoot. Kentucky is five of seven from three-point range, and they're back on top by one. Well, Jay, I want to ask you, every top program has a down year. Duke had one. Carolina had one last year. Uh, Kentucky, a down year for them, as Dick mentioned, is 10 losses. In your mind, uh, is Kentucky still one of the elite programs in the country? And basically, are, are the fans being too tough? Is, is this just the way college basketball is right now? Well, it's certainly the way it is at Kentucky. When you've been as successful as the Wildcats have been over the course of their history, fans are going to get spoiled. And that's just all there is to it. And I, I think what's interesting is in the, in the mid-90s, uh, 96, 97, 98, Kentucky was an overtime period away against Arizona from a three-peat. That's an extraordinary accomplishment. And that's what these fans are operating off of, to have that kind of success over a three-year period will spoil you for an awfully long time. And you could even step up a year earlier, Jay, as you watch May make that 15-foot jump shot with those great hands and touch. You can go to 95. They were the Elite Eight and got beat Rick Pitino's club by North Carolina and Dean Smith when Kentucky shot 7 for 36 from the trifecta as Dean Smith shut down their perimeter game. Well, you can go one further than that, Dick, even. If you can look back to Christian Leitner's shot in 90 he doesn't hit that shot. There is no question Kentucky was the program in the team of the 90s. Battle underneath. Hayes is in there, and Bogans has it ripped away. Now May is called for the foul, and Hayes will go to the line as we show you graphically some of the history and tradition for this great Kentucky basketball program. This, again, is their 100th season. More wins and a better winning percentage, more tourney appearances. Oh, wow. than, and one of your, let's not forget Ashley Judd, one oh, of your wow. favorites. Yeah, huh? I got a kiss from Ashley, famous alum, man. I got a kiss. Don't you give me a kiss, Dan. I want no kisses. <laughs> You're coming too close to me, Dan. I don't want that kiss. Get away from me. Get away from me, Dan. Hey, he's trying to give me a kiss here, man. I don't want You no got kisses. no worries no, with no, me. No, you no, got no, no worries kisses. with me. Get out of here. Too cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll tell you this, though. You mentioned tradition. They, they don't want to up Dean Smith years ago. He said, let's hook up into a 10-game series. And he convinced Dean that will play six in the left of Lexington, four in Chapel Hill. Dean said, okay. Ready for this? Dean in that series went 7-3. and three. He's 13 and 13-3 in his career against Kentucky. That magical name, Dean Smith. I only wish he was here so I could just shake his hand. I know he's at home. and I miss the guy because he's one of the greatest ever, ever to work his side on. Matt Darty says he talks to him after every game kind of become a, a superstition thing, a good luck charm right now. That's what he told me. Yeah. Back and forth they've gone. The lead has changed hands several times already here this afternoon. Now they got Felton playing Bogans. Look at that matchup. Bogans could actually go inside, try to post Felton a little. Well, let's not slight North Carolina and the great history in that program as well. And right up there with Kentucky, ahead of Kentucky in certain situations. There's Dean Smith, you talked about. I mean, almost 1,800 wins, 35 NCAA tournament appearances. What was it, 27 in a row until last year, right? Exactly. 
What about 37 years in a row? Jim Khalil jump hook inside. That size advantage. Kamara, 37 years in a row. Number one, two, or three in the ACC. And 41 years in a row, winning 20 games or more. Will they, will they start new streaks this year? That's my question to you. It looks like they have the personnel. That looks to me like they're going to be back in the NCAA tournament unless you got a scoop, man. <laughs> if they're 65 better than them, you got a major scoop. Coming up tonight, Quentin Griffin leads number nine, Oklahoma, against number 12, Colorado. More bull bids on the line of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship at 8 Eastern tonight on ABC Sports, the class of college football. Brett Musburger will have it ready to go in that game. Oh, Williams yeah. hangs and hits, and Sean May gets the assist. He's having a terrific all-round half. Now the foul is going to go against Felt, number two on him. What great passing ability by May. I mean, just a great job. Watch it, freeze it. He gets it up here, and he drops it right down. Defense all attacks May, and wide open down in the baseline. Jawad Williams. Oh, what a great move. Have you ever used that thing before, that telestrator? I love using that thing. <laughs> I love the telestrator. Hey, I want to bring in uh, Jay Billis. Big man passing. We saw it from Kamara earlier and, and from Sean May. I mean, Jay, for a big guy, is that just something you're born with, or is that something the coaches are really drilling into their big guys? Well, in Sean May's case, I think it was something he was born with. I, I think you can drill it into your big guys and teach them to be better passers, but he's just got a unique feel. Of all the high school big men I saw last year, Sean May had the best hands and the best feet of any of them, and he's got great poise. It's interesting. I, I think he's as athletic as he needs to be given the situation because he does have good quickness, and he's got good lift. He just uses it when he needs it. I mean, it's amazing in high school. He played together. What a tandem with Jared Jeffries, who lost one game in high school. It was a state championship to Zach Randolph, who still would be eligible at Michigan yep. State. He'd be a but junior. He's, yeah, he's now playing for the Portland Trailblazers. What about that facility up there? We saw $8 million off. This is for Mr. Izzo and company. You're going to remodel your home uh, after what they've done up in East Lansing. Huh? They're going to get new practice facilities down at Kentucky. Oh, oh McCants again. He's big time, my friends. He's big time. He's got a dozen, and Carolina's got the lead back. We sung his praises out of New York in the Big Apple, and if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. Hayes trying to back him down, got a size advantage, steps in and scores. Nice move. I like Hayes. He's one of these kids. He's just a tenacious, tough, physical player. Back from the bloody nose earlier in the half. Williams chasing down the miss, and it's out of bounds to Kentucky. May posed on that shot. He posed on that shot. Now, Sean May, not as spectacular as Felton or McCants, but, boy, he gets it done. Great job of reversing the basketball, reversing it, excellent passing. You don't expect to see that out of a young team, but this team has adopted a very unselfish attitude. One-point lead for visiting Kentucky. Matt Dart has done a great job blending the egos of these superstar high school players. Logan's nowhere to go. Kamara trying to bring Grant out away from the basket. Kentucky playing without a one-point guard, but what a loss. Of course, it's a great junior college player. Oh, and oh. Logan's attacking the basket, attacking the basket, and that's what he does best. He needs a little love, though, man. He needs a little love from those Kentucky fans and the media. Double figures now for Bogans, and Kentucky up three. Jerry Tipton gave him some love, the writer in Lexington, about how he's moving up the charts and scoring and having a good year this year. Felton launches a deep three, rims out, offensive rebound, Williams in a block by Kamara. That's what Kamara does well, he's a shot blocker. Pitch traveled, and that's going to send us to a timeout. What a pace we've had here today. Kentucky leading by three. When we come back, we'll check in on Sean May and some of the old-school traits in his game. We're back. Bama off to a good start this season, taking on a tough stunt Bonaventure team. It's a one-point ball game. Watch out for All-American Irwin Dudley. Gets the ball, gets bang, gets it to go. No foul call. Bama pulling away a little bit. Meantime, football. Virginia Tech trying to score in the final minute of the play in the second half. They now will have a third and goal. They're about to go to the half. Stay tuned to us for an update. 
We're back a three-point deficit here for Sean May and the North Carolina Tar Heels. As Jay Billis said so well a few minutes ago, he is as athletic as he needs to be. But, boy, he's got skills and poise. And, obviously, his dad gave him a great head start. Yeah, there he is in the old school show. He used to turn around a little jump shot. Nothing fancy. Good position. That's old school again. He's right in a little simple, just little jump shot, doing things the right way. Has great feel, understanding for the game. And then he can also, he can show you a little bit new school as well. <laughs> Bottom line is he's a productive player. Eight points, eight rebounds already here today. May is on the bench right now. Williams and Grant in the game as the big guys. McCants again. That was a tough shot. I mean, he had his hand in his face. I mean, just unbelievable. 15 points for Rashad McCants, and now he's working hard on Keith Bogans at the other end. Kamara switches hands. Wild shot. North Carolina ball. What a first half by McCants. The leading score, better than 19 per game. Great ball movement again. Jay, as Dick mentioned, young guys... They all came to college as the big man on campus in high school, but these guys are willing to share the load. And, and they bring such a competitive nature to this game, Dan. I, I think Rashad McCants was the most competitive high school player I saw all year last year. And he certainly brought that to the college level without one bit of fear in his game. And he's got a terrific stroke. You know, his reputation was that of a slasher, but he can really shoot the ball effectively from the perimeter. We saw a terrific move by Hayes taking the ball in the basket, utilizing his left. Hand, but Carolina executed the old inside outside to get that score out of Felton. Great interior and bringing it back to the perimeter. Inside outside. Just did a great job. Now, watch the ball go to the interior. They're going to kick it right back out, Jay. And that's what collapses that defense. You can kick it out to an open shooter. And Raymond Felton, the key, Dick, was he was ready to shoot as the ball arrived. He didn't get ready once he caught it. The problem for Raymond Felton is he just picked up a third foul here in the first half. And he's going to leave this game. I tell you, Bogan's having a big first half here as well. Stepping up as a senior. Well, now Jonathan Holmes, who had a big three earlier, comes back in. David Noel checks in for Jawad Williams as well. Again, North Carolina going much deeper, much earlier than we saw earlier in the season. You know, when you go inside and you bring the ball back out, you attract help on the interior, and usually you got a stationary shooter in perfect position to knock down the shot. And Felton gives him a weapon out there. He's more than just a driver and a penetrator. He's got to reduce his turnovers. Yeah. He had eight turnovers against Illinois. I have to get by without him at least for the next minute and 42 seconds here. Melvin Scott along with Holmes, the ball handlers for Carolina. Noel with a nice strong move baseline. It's out of bounds. I tell you guys, it over. it's been a really solid first half. And we've got more great college basketball action coming your way here today and tonight on ESPN. The Crosstown Shootout, David West and the Musketeers taking on Bob Huggins, Cincinnati Bearcats. And then the number one team in the country, Arizona against San Diego State tonight at 9 Eastern. We talked about great passing big men. Now, Luke Walton is not a center, but he's a 6'8 guy who sees the floor as well as anybody in America. And he's on a cover of our basketball preview, and the guy's got a great inside. There's inside out right there. There's inside outside again. Only trouble is, you got the wrong people shooting the basketball on the perimeter. What a hustle play there down on the baseline by Noel. And Carolina gets the ball back. They feel that David Noel's athleticism is going to be a big plus. We watch him hustle. He originally committed here for football, but he decided to walk on in basketball. Look at him hustling right there. He's hustling. He's saying, wow. You know, so much confidence for these North Carolina players with what they did in the NIT. Kentucky out of Maui. They beat Arizona State. They lost to Virginia when they hit only two threes and 22 attempts. Then they came back to beat Gonzaga for third place. Oh, look at a great position inside. Great position inside, reminiscent of our producer who I tried to recruit. Turned me down to go to Stanford. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Mr. Belton, one of a Hall of Famers at Stanford. I tell you, that Kim is reminiscent to me, AJ, of watching May. Now, you don't remember Kim Belton as a player, but I do. Actually, I do. I watched Kim when I was in high school growing up in California. He's I didn't a know terrific, you were that old. He's I didn't a, know you were that old. <laughs> terrific rebounder, a terrific defender. We start coming up at halftime. Carl Ravitch will take you around show you all the other big games today, including Texas in a battle with GW and Pittsburgh trying to extend an undefeated season. Well, Carl, Mr. Baseball, I wonder his reaction when Tom Clavin signed with the Mets. And Digger, you know, he's uh, thinking about his son-in-law, Jamie Moyer, where he's going to wind up next year. Maybe Philadelphia. Oh, look at Jim, yes! Great left-hand tip. 
Right left hand tip. Was that McKenzie again? That was, I think, oh. 17 if it was him. Carolina in the zone. What a sensational first half performance by the Diaper Dandy. Bogans for three. Rebound, Carolina. See, if I were playing Kentucky, I'd want Bogans to try to beat me from the perimeter. I would take away his driving game, which is his meal money, man. It's his driving game, and I'd let him go for that jump shot on the perimeter. Let's take another look at the tip, see if it was McCants, whoever it was. Again, the heels are all over the glass today. That was McCants. Yep. I believe it was McCants. I was moving the cats. I got one eye, and I still think it was McCann. How about these number sticks? Seven for seven from the floor, including three threes and a game high 17 points already. What a start here today for Rashad McCants. Carolina leading Kentucky by three in the final minute of the first half. And there's uh, the big football game everybody's looking in on. Miami, so far so good, up 14 at halftime. Boy, that was more like a basketball score. It's amazing. I think they've won like 33 in a that's row. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's an incredible story. And Larry Coker, if you were to go in the stands right now here and ask, who is the coach of Miami? I will guarantee you that 50% of the people will not know the name of Larry Coker. Don't forget tomorrow night, Reese, Trav, and Mark will have the first breakdown and analysis of each and every bowl game. It's the College Game Day Bowl Selection special presented by Outback. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Depends what happens with Miami and also UCLA, Washington State, and so on down the list. You know, you talk about fans being fickle. Two years ago, after they had lost to Kentucky here by 17, Carolina wins 18 in a row. They go as high as number one in America. Then they go 5-5 five and five in their last 10, and everybody's screaming, what about our team? What about our college? <laughs> what about... It's amazing. That's why I love television, man. It's my 24th year, and I haven't lost the game undefeated Matt Doherty and Tubby Smith can probably share some memories that only the two of them and maybe Steve Lavin could appreciate as well some of the toughest coaching jobs in college basketball Lavin is part of that soap opera as you watch the turnover as, oh bad pass right there McCants had a dunk McCants had a dunk at the half Huge first, first half for Rashad McCants and a standing ovation for the Carolina Tar Heels as they go off the floor, leading the Kentucky Wildcats by three. An outstanding, entertaining first half of basketball here at the Dean Smith Center this afternoon. Carl Rabbit standing by with a halftime report. Let's send it over to Jay Billis, who's standing by with Matt Doherty. Jay? Matt, in the first half, it didn't look like you got the tempo early on you wanted, but your defense seemed to increase it. Were you pleased with what your kids did defensively? I was. I thought we were pretty active. I thought we did a good job on the boards. I think we've got more offensive boards than they do. Uh, knock on wood, we've got to convert. They're really long inside, and they make it difficult for us inside trying to shoot the basketball. But we're in good shape. We've given up 40 points a little more than I'd like to, but uh, we're right there, and we've got a lot of guys in foul trouble. The most important thing you want to get across to your kids for the second half? Oh, probably playing without fouling. Don't lose their aggressiveness. Uh, we've, we've mishandled the ball a couple times, but I'm happy where we're at right now. I think we're in good shape, especially uh, the way we started so slow. Matt, thanks. Good luck in the second half. Back to you, Dan. All right, Jay, thanks. Well, Coach Matt Doherty said it. He is happy with the way his kids played in the first half. Why not? McCants with 17. Tar Heels up three as we send it back to Carl Ravage for the halftime report. Carl? Dan, Dick, Jay, thank you. We'll come back, find out who's happy in this, what has been a war. Texas and GW. It's real close with about seven to go. A lot of good games. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Located on the web at nbus.com. Well, in those plays alone, you have seen several examples of the athleticism and the intensity that has been on display here inside the sold-out Dean Smith Center, a three-point lead for Carolina over Kentucky. I know we've talked about him a lot, but you've got to talk about him a little more. <laughs> well, we've got to talk about the diaper yeah. daddies. I mean, they've been so super. Look at on the inside. We watched the great touch, fundamentally solid, Mr. May. And then Rashawn McCants, the high riser, working the baseline, a baseline beauty. Look at the ball reversal, swinging, and he knocks down the trifecta to show his versatility. Look at the score in here. 33 and a point. Scored by the Diaper Dandies. The rest of the team 10. And then they won the YJ. We sing the praises <laughs> of these young players.
players. And rightfully so. You know, Dick, last year, Carolina's defense was try and stay in front of your man, make him shoot over, and hope they miss. This year, it's pressure and denial, forcing their opponents further out on the floor. Look at the defense here by Raymond Felton. Here comes a trap by Jackie Manuel. Guys are getting on the floor. And the result, a dunk on the other end by Felton. That's scoring off your defense. And a great job by North Carolina. They've done it all season long. And we're going to be seeing it in the future as well. You know, last year, Jay, they were a very slow team. And you talked about Boone and Morrison. And you talked about Capel and Lang. Didn't have the quickness, Dan, that they possess now. Possess now and they're taking advantage of that quickness. And Sean May, so fundamentally sound. Nine points, eight rebounds, no wasted motion. One of the smartest guys Great on touch. the floor. Yeah, I mean, he's a, a terrific player. Now, Kentucky, let, let's give them a little, a little pop here, too. They're only down three. They had some guys... In some foul trouble early. Sean May, we talked about the old school. Got a little new school moves working yep. for him today, too. But what does Kentucky need to do to try to change things in the second half? They got to get Estill and they got to get Kamar to put some points on the board. With their size advantage and their talent, they have only a deuce between them. That's right. Both of them scoring in double figures, and there it is right away. Marquise Estill with his first points of the game. He is too talented to be in that situation. I was talking to our producer off the year before we came back on the year about how they have to be productive if Kentucky's going to get out of here with a W. Manuel with a miss. Estill with a rebound, and a foul is called. Let's bring in uh, Jay Billis. Talk a little bit about uh, some thoughts from the Kentucky coaches as they came back onto the floor, Jay. Guys, Tubby Smith talked to his team about halftime about getting tougher, about holding their ground in the post and getting on the glass. In the first half, they were out-rebounded by nine, and Carolina had 11 offensive rebounding opportunities in that first 20 minutes. Tubby Smith wants his team to be tougher in the second half. That's always been a trademark of Kentucky as well. Really attack, be aggressive, trying to get a little isolation here for Estill. They've decided to go to him inside. Going to work on May, who at the other end picked up his third foul. So now we're going to see if May can play some defense without committing another foul. Remember we had Travis Watson. He became so passive in that Michigan State game when he had three fouls and only played three minutes in that first half. A quick four points here in the second half for Kentucky to take the lead. Williams spinning over Estill, rattles out. May has it, lost it. Bogans leads a three on two. Well, he had some helpers on either side and didn't see him. And now Bogans is down hurt at the other end of the floor. Not a good shot by Bogans, but he is hurt down there. Bogans, I believe it might be the left ankle that he was grasping at the other end of the floor, and he is still down. This can be right now almost Kentucky season. That's how valuable he is to Kentucky. He is so valuable to this team with his scoring ability, his experience. Tubby's got to be really concerned. You know, you showed great coaching in Tubby, getting the ball inside to Estill in those two possessions, knowing May's got three fouls. Kentucky's already got Cliff Hawkins, who would be their starting point guard, academically ineligible for at least a couple more weeks. Antoine Ron Barber, Barber. A shooting guard, broke his left hand. He's oh, going to be good. out at least a month, and now here's Bogans up and trying to put a little bit of weight on that ankle. That's a good sign right there, watching him walk off. Former the math, the play for Morgan Wooten, one of the greatest coaches of all time on any level. Wish him the best in his retirement. When you talk about Morgan Wooten, Dean Smith, John Wooden, they all had one common denominator. Great teachers and really great people of integrity. As you look at the first half numbers right here, one of the big differences is right here in the free throw line. When you look at the fact that Kentucky went to the line a lot more, and that's what kept the game close to that situation as Carolina only went for five. Offensive rebounding again, 11-3 in favor of Carolina. That was a concern of Matt Doherty in recent games. It has been a strength for North Carolina here today. North Carolina now is zoning on the inbounds of the basketball, trying to double up on Estill. It's going to open up some perimeter shots. Maybe it'll there be it Fitch. Yeah. There it is, yeah. right there. Going to open up some perimeter shots, and Fitch knocks it down. About a making Georgia. I suspended, did a little bit. Grew up a little bit. Got a little bit more mature, according to Reggie Hanson, assistant coach. Three second call against the Tar Heels as we go back to the other end of the floor and look at how Fitch got such an open look. Yeah, they're doubling up on the inside. See, it's right here. Look at it right. Freeze it. They double up, and now they reverse the basketball. What a great job of reversing the basketball. Great triple threat position. Freezes the defensive player. And tickles the twine. NBN, nothing but nylon. No bogan, so who's the go-to guy? They're going to the same look. Get it in, then get it back out. So I think they're trying to protect Maine now by yep. going to that zone. Playing with three fouls, as is Felton. 
Great position inside. Oh, and Estel left it short. Kentucky's got to take advantage of the foul situation, and they do right there again. Esther made with three fouls. That could be the big storyline here. Tubby Smith said recently Marquise Estel is as offensively talented as anybody he's ever coached. As May is banged inside by Kavala. That's a pretty heavy statement. Oh, that is a very strong statement. Tubby was part of one of the greatest staffs ever assembled when Rick Pitino had Billy Donovan, Tubby Smith, Herb Sendick, and Ralph Woolard on the same staff. That's hard to believe, Jay, when you think of that staff. Three-point lead for Kentucky, although Tubby Smith doesn't look like a guy with a lead. Let's go to Jay Billis for more on Keith Bogans. Jay? Guys, Keith Bogans twisted his ankle, and he was just taken up to Tubby Smith and sat down next to him, told him he's ready to go back in. And now Tubby Smith is sending him back into the ball game. So Keith Bogans ready to go back in and is entering the game right as we speak. And he's limping a little bit as he's coming in. He's limping a little bit. He's got that little limp. That's not good right there. No, but you know, you get to your senior season and you start saying, hey, got to play, right? No tomorrow. And Adrenaline and yeah. flow is waving it off. Another mistake. Well, so Carolina's had a three-second violation and has also had a lane violation on a free throw in the last two trips down the floor. What about the quarterback of Marshall? He played left, which played with a bad, bad ankle and threw for about 400 yards. 2-3, right. 2-3. Two, three, two, three. Look at that, going inside again. We said it. I, I told you there before the half, they got to get productivity out of Estel. And, man, are they responding. They must be tuned into us, man. They are really responding. Ball goes inside. May can't foul. So he's playing passive. He's allowing him to take the shot on the inside. I think there's a danger sometimes of guys playing. I want to go to Jay Phillips about this, having been a big guy who played in situations with three fouls. Hey, Jay. When you think about the situation, and May now gets his fourth foul, certainly right now, I mean, he's got to come out of the he's game. Not coming do out they right know now. he's got four, Jay? I don't think they know he's got four, Jay. Well, they should. I think the problem that you get when a guy gets four fouls is you don't want him to pick up the, the fifth one right away. You have to get him out of the ball game and then put him back in and just tell him to play because when you play tentatively, you're more likely to pick up fouls. But what Kentucky's done has been really smart in this second half. They've made quick moves inside once they've gotten the ball. They haven't waited. They've turned, looked, and made quick moves. Jay, I don't know if we are being told on our reports he has four, and maybe there's an error and he has three. We gotta check that out. ESPN Full Court on pay-per-view to order. Well, too much physical play from the team in Orange. Texas on the road at GW up 87-78. Mouton, James Thomas. Mouton's got 14. It's now a 12-point game, and they're under a minute to go. Here's the story on that last foul. It was on Felton reaching down from the top of the key. So Felton has four. May has three. They're both on the bench right now. Foul trouble for Carolina. Scoreboard trouble for Carolina. Marquise Estel has taken over the game here early in the second half. And now another turnover. It's a five on two for Kentucky. And Fitch knocks down the jumper. He's got 16 points in the game. What an excellent job in transition. Two on one. Spread the court. And again, that's coaching. That's repetition. They do that in drills all the time. What an unbelievable performance, I say, by Tubby Smith here. And taking advantage of Estel to go on this 11 zip run. And also right there with Fitch knocking down the jumper. Melvin Scott having to operate at the point. Will Johnson, Damian Grant into the game as well. Jawan Williams blows by Kamara, but it misses the shot. Williams and Manuel and Scott are going to really have to step up. They're south with Felton out of the game and also May out. And the Kansas getting ready to check back in. They can't let this one get too far away. Fitch is feeling it right now. A three-pointer, and it's a 14-0 run for the Wildcats. I tell you, he's got the quiet crowd quiet. Fitch taking advantage from the perimeter. Williams inside, and finally the drought is over as Carolina gets back within 11. Well, Jawan Williams has good offensive ability. See, I would go right inside to Estel. I'd take care of a hot hand, man, and bring the ball inside to Estel. Subs coming for Carolina. The young Tar Heels are being severely tested by Mark Reese Estel and the Cats here today. It's a three. Closer than expected, St. Bonnie's in Alabama. Patricia Prato, he's going to help. Knock it down, 41-38. What's going on here with the Bonnies? Now 46-38. That 
Carl, I guess it's like the NFL. Parity rules. Anybody can beat anybody. Marquise Estel obviously found something or heard something by Tubby Smith at halftime because he was a non-factor in the first half and he has been the dominant factor in the second half as McCants goes over and fouls Hayes to prevent the big dunk. Well, you know, Esther was 0 for 1, but we talked about how they had to utilize him here in the second half, and they did. There he is inside. Bingo! Bring it to Mr. Resto. Here he goes again. Bingo! Bring it to Mr. Resto. Here he goes again. Bingo! Bring it to Mr. Resto. Mr. Resto has eight quick points and has set the tone here for Kentucky in the second half. And I know all their passionate big blue fans have to be jumping with joy. I'll tell you, you don't find better fans in terms of a love for the school. Yeah. It's just that they go beyond after a loss. They can't have the loser. <laughs> they travel as well as anybody. Oh, yeah, I mean, when they go out to Maui, when they go up sir. to Alaska, it's like a home game for them. They're really great fans, and they love their cats. Maybe sometimes they love them too much. This is the first true road game of the season for the Kentucky Wildcats, and they have responded awfully well. Carolina's in some foul trouble, Felton with four. May is back in the game, playing with three. And also, we're going to see a different look Kentucky team in terms of versatility, in terms of ability to rotate people when they get Cliff Hawkins back after the first semester, and they get a healthy Antoine Barber in four weeks, Jay. Yep. It's going to change the complexion of this team. Well, it'll certainly give them more depth. And, Dick, let's see if you agree with us. I think North Carolina started the second half much like they did the first. They kind of felt their way around and allowed Kentucky to deliver the first blow. And Kentucky was so much more decisive with their moves inside, with Gerald Fitz taking shots from the perimeter. They were just more, they're quicker thinking, quicker reacting, and more decisive. What do you say, Ben? Yeah, I agree with you, I think they're very lethargic, North Carolina, and I think one of the problems, and I want to ask you this as a former player, I think when a kid like May gets three fouls, you have a tendency to play passive. I think that's exactly right, especially when you've got to play a power position. But the other problem they're having is their leader at the point guard position is off the floor right now, and it's awfully difficult to compensate for that, even though Melvin Scott is capable of playing the position. They've got to get Felton back out on that floor. They got a nice drive from David Noel there, and that's the kind of guy that they saw during the summer. Kenny Smith did the former North Carolina superstar. I told you, I left a message today for David on Matt Doherty's phone. I could be a pickup for the club. Fans starting to feel maybe a little run coming here for North Carolina, even with Raymond Felton not in the game right now. As Jay mentioned, he's got four fouls. They've got to get him back in there at some point. A timeout taken by Kentucky with a 10-point lead here. Still a ton of time to go in this game. And there is more great college basketball action coming your way this afternoon and tonight here on ESPN. Xavier and Cincinnati. And there will be not one, not two, but three Waltons in the house for Arizona and San Diego State. Bill's calling the game. Luke's playing for Arizona. And Chris is a red shirt for San Diego State. So the deadheads, the redheads will all be in attendance yeah. here tonight, huh? Hey, big red. Red. We're going to see him Thursday. I'm going to get his autograph. We're down here to see LeBron James. You know what? I'm getting enthused about seeing that kid. The curiosity on Thursday. Had so many calls from the media about the fact of us going down here. Big Red's going to That's join right. me, myself, and Jay Bellis. Way back underway. Bogans, little hesitation, and he makes it count. That's his strength. Why he doesn't do that more often? He's a strong driver, as strong as any driver in college basketball. 13 for Bogans. He's got the sore left ankle, remember, and he is still limping, coming back up the floor. It's amazing now North Carolina's got to go with a diaper dandy to give them the spark because my chance is going to have to be really energetic here and perform like he did in that first half. As you look at the ankle of Bogans. Kansas is going to win battle for North Carolina. As Jay mentioned, Scott at the point. But Fitch has had a good game for Kentucky. Manuel for three! Jackie Manuel has become an outstanding defensive player, but he has offensive ability as well. Kamara, tough catch. Back to Bogans. Crowd thought he might have been out of bounds under the basket. I'm really impressed with the poise that Fitch is playing on a perimeter run. Esto, and again, give Bogans all the credit. He is grimacing back up the floor, but he made that play happen on the drive. Yeah, he created it, but where was Mark Peace Esto in the first half? That's not the same play. That's what Tubby wants to know. Yeah, that's not the same play. Boy, Tubby uh, found a way to get him going. Bogans is called for the foul. That's going to be his third, but he is playing awfully hard on that gimpy left ankle. 
Tubby also knows that with so much time on the clock and you're on the road, that you got to stay focused, that you got to be in it the entire way. You can't relax in any shape or form. Because this team's very explosive. You and I saw it against Kansas and Stanford. They could go on a spurt that's incredible. Not a lot of penetration without Felton in the game. Everything on the perimeter right now for Carolina. It's Manuel again, his second consecutive three. Manuel stepping up, trying to give him some point production. Felton on the sideline. Jackie Manuel, the set. These kids have sort of been forgotten, and they have really improved. Manuel, Williams, and Scott. Looking inside again, this time Kamara with a huge height advantage on Noel. Throws it away. Danger time. They score here, you better get a T.O., baby. They score here, you better get a T.O. McCants can't finish. Just too much one on three underneath. Yeah, tried to get a little bit too spectacular. Kentucky shooting 77% here in the second half. And they're using the high percentage shots available to Esther. I'm going to Esther right now. May's got three. I'm going to attack May. They're clearing out for him. I would attack him with those three fouls. Bogans for three. There's the old story of inside, outside, and taking a high percentage perimeter shot. Not one with hands in your face. What an excellent two-man game. McCants inside on the feed from Noel. Noel's really played a lot better here, Dan. Let's bring in Jay. Jay, Kentucky was 2 for 22 shooting threes against Virginia. They're 8 for 11 today. How do you explain that? Well, I think you explain it by the quality of shots that they took. Against Virginia, they took a lot of shots against the zone off of one pass. And as Dick mentioned, getting the ball inside, then kicking it back out means that Kentucky is shooting more in rhythm. Instead of taking it with a hand up, they've got a guy trying to close out. The nice drive inside, drawing the defense. And May, not in any position to help. The rotation by Rashad McCants a little bit slow. And on the other end for North Carolina, Carolina is trying to post Rashad McCants. Instead of having Sean May banging in there, they wanted to put McCants the last four or five possessions. The last one, they were able to find him, and he was able to score. Expect to see a little bit more of that as this game goes on. And we also saw a shot selection with that nice play by Mc by Bogans from the perimeter after the two-man game and a help inside on Estill and were able to bring the ball out to Bogans. The key is, in that game against Virginia, when they were 0 for 16, it was shot selection. They took horrendous shots. They are right now, their repertoire of shots has absolutely improved. They are high percentage shots. That's how you win games. The difference in good teams and bad teams is shot selection and understanding who should shoot. Look at the ball. Great right passing again. And those were the three big guys. Estill to Kamara to Hayes. And they formed a little triangle. In basketball, you like to get a triangle. Two guys on the boxes, a guy up at the apex of it, and then reverse the ball and get good ball movement inside. What a great job of moving the ball on the inside. And then Hayes, who's a warrior, man. He's just a warrior. One of those tough, hard-nosed kids. Well, you look at what Kentucky's trying to accomplish with a very difficult early season schedule. They went to Maui. Now they're here at Carolina. Got some more tough games coming. We're here at the Dean Smith Center. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, and Jay Billis, the two winningest programs in the history of college basketball, each trying to add to their table here today. Kentucky shooting lights out here this afternoon as Kamara, I believe, is going to be called for the foul over the back of McCants. And it's all shot selection. I'm going to tell you right now, Kentucky's going to have a heck of a year this year. When they get back, Hawkins, who should be focused after being immature and not doing the job in the classroom like he should have, I think he's going to come out focused for him, give him another perimeter player, and Antoine Barber gets that hand healthy because he's an excellent passer. I think they have the makings of having a team that is going to be top 15 quality all year. Tubby Smith thinks this is the deepest team he's had, as you look at Barber, just had surgery a few days ago. Tubby thinks this is the deepest team he's had since his first year at Kentucky, and we all know who was cutting down the nets at the end of that season. Now, not to compare this talent level to that talent level, but he's pretty excited about this team. And I just wish people would get off the guy's back. He's such an outstanding coach. So many people would love to have him. Let him coach! Let him coach! Let him coach! Why do I... Get the comedy everyone can agree on. Oh, yeah. 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 The biggest comedy of the year. Ready, Gets set to play in a big bowl. The basketball team thinks about March Madness and nearly let one get away against GW, but Sidmel Harris is there to finish it off. Good road win in December. They beat him by eight, 100 to 92. Yeah.
tomorrow. The other game of that tournament, Maryland wow. against Notre Dame, and then wow. the winners will meet tomorrow. That's great basketball all yeah. over the country. You know, John Feinstein helps to put that together. Fine author who's written so many outstanding books. And they got Maryland with Danny Miller going to hook up against the That's Irish, right. who are hoping to get a great performance out of Chris Thomas. Hey, speaking about writers, Curry Kirkpatrick's in the house from ESPN Magazine, and he's doing a major, major story on there. He, uh, come on, Curry, smile, Curry. A creative writer who makes music with the typewriter. He's going to be doing a story on North Carolina, Duke, Wake Forest, and NC State. How basketball is alive and well here in North Carolina. And they are certainly back on the map after an 8 20 season. The Tar Heels a year ago. Sean Mayrich down the rebound. Felton's back in the game with four fouls right now for Carolina. What a block by Estill on Williams. And here comes Kentucky, led by Bogans. What a great play. Unbelievable play by Estill. And then look at Eric Daniels working on the glass for the offensive rebound after sitting out four games suspended by the NCAA. And you know what? I really think the NCAA has got to relook at those rules. As you see right here, the offensive rebound. Look at Daniels. There he is with the offensive rebound. Let me let me just share this with you, Dan, and with the people out there. Here's a kid that was suspended for four games because he played in two sanctioned summer leagues. I say to the NCAA, hot wash with that. A kid should be allowed to play in as many sanctioned leagues as he wants just to play basketball. And let's go after schools that are cheating and buying players and not worrying about kids doing what they want to do and do best, play basketball. That should be a no-no what happened to Eric Daniels. Well, I know there's about 50 coaches around the country who agree with you because this is not a, a unique case. This is happening at a lot of different schools. Well, you know, a sanctioned tournament and they're not getting any money. It's organized. It's sanctioned by the NCAA. Why should he play as many as he wants? I just got to get that out of my way. Jay, what do you feel about all this? No, Dick's right. I think there has to be some balance and some common sense put into the system. And while I think Eric Daniels should have been a little bit smarter in understanding that he couldn't play in two sanctioned summer leagues, uh, having a kid penalized that much uh, for making a mistake like that I think is wrong. We've talked about the Billy Edlin case at Syracuse, and a lot of these cases just don't seem to make common sense. And yeah, Billy Edlin, that's a joke of all jokes. Played in a 40 and older league? Played in a 40 and older league while he's not even a student at Syracuse? And they suspend him for 12 games? Oh, let's get back to the game here. Estill has been absolutely super. He has really had a great second half, and that's been the difference here. And solid performances by everyone else, which has given him this 15-point lead. Estill has all 12 of his points here in the second half. The big reason why Kentucky, which was down three at the break, is now up by 15. Bogans has really played solid here today as well. Felton launches the three, not there. By the way, McCants and May now each with three fouls as Williams will lay it in on the feed from Jackie Manuel. Jackie Manuel with a nice little look to his sophomore buddy, Gerard Williams. Kentucky gets out of that trap before it even happens, and Bogans' his stroke is so much better than it was a year ago. Well, he can make that shot when he's got the good shot. It's when he was forcing threes. He's got the good look right there. They'd like to have some of those threes back at Maui against Virginia. Manuel misses the three, and the rebound to Fitch. Most dangerous right here. The fact that now North Carolina may start to jack up all threes, trying to get back in this game. And a lot of time on the clock, they got to be patient and take good shots. And later on today, by the way, on ESPN2, North Carolina fans, the women's soccer team in a national semifinal against Santa Clara played yesterday as Estill lays it in again, and now he's got 14 all in the second half. Post defense inside by North Carolina, non-existent right there, and they get the ball inside to Estill. Felton, a lot of handling, gets off the floater, no. And Kentucky doing a much better job also on the glass in the second Half, did not as many second opportunities for the Tar Heels. Kentucky in total command here as you take a look right here. Points in the paint. It's been all Estel. That's a four to one ratio, basically. Almost five to one. Daniels again. Yeah, Estel can't give him that kind of position inside. Now he's getting great position. Poor job defensively in post defense. And one of the reasons May's got three fouls. You know, Matt Doherty wasn't really happy as McCants finds May. Matt Doherty wasn't happy 
that his team had given up 40 points in the first half. They've given up 38 already in the second half. He's talked about a defensive identity, defense leading to offense. Their defense has not been very good here today. You know what's really good for these kids? That they are going to get a little break now for about 10 days to two weeks before they play again against Vermont. They've played so many games. And look at these diaper dandies here at the back of the road, man. I'm telling you, Duke has a bunch of them with Reddick and Randolph and company. And I'm telling you, they're all over Carolina with McCants and certainly Mr. Felton and Mr. May. They got a bunch of them. You go all over this area and you can find diaper dandies. Look at May on the inside. Turn around a little jump shot. I'll tell you, the league is loaded right now with so many young players. Georgia Tech has Jerry Jack and Chris Bosch. Down at Wake Forest, Eric Williams and Justin Gray. Take a look here, scoring this season by the freshman. I mean, it's unbelievable. Look at the Carmelo Anthony down there. And Bosch is a double-double guy for Georgia Tech. Hey, in the house is our buddy Brad Doherty. That's who right. does a great job with us. And his son right now, Colton, a beautiful <laughs> young guy, 11 years old. Good looking. Looks just like the mom, man. Really good looking. He's a ball boy here today and is all excited. Butch has done an outstanding job finding people today and shooting the ball as well. And he's not a true point guard. Yep. He's showing again that if you've got enough ball handlers, and they do with Bogans and certainly Fitcher when they get Barber, guys that can handle the ball, you can be effective. Well, let me add, you talked about the diaper dandies, and rightly so. That's been the, the dominant theme in the early part of the college basketball season. But Tubby Smith knows he's got a senior in Esther. He's got a senior in Kamara. He's got a senior in Bogans. I mean, not a lot of teams have that at this level of basketball. That experience counts for a lot, doesn't it? Well, it does. An experience and understanding how to handle and they play such a tough schedule they're not intimidated wherever they go two years ago they came here and put the hurt on north carolina and they went out and won 18 in a row that darty's club and become number one in the nation it doesn't get any easier for tubby though he's got games coming up with teams like michigan state yep. he's got indiana take a look at their schedule tulane's not going to be easy down there against one of his former assistants and then they got a date and we'll be there for that one and morgan stone remember that night? <laughs> he's going to be wearing a louisville uniform for Rick Pitino. Another block, Estill getting him inside, and now a tie-up gives it back over to the Wildcats. I think Louisville's going to be a different team when they have the composition of their team when he gains on the perimeter and stone inside as you watch it. Tenacious. This guy's such a fierce competitor, Matt Dog. That's why I respect him. He did a great job at Notre Dame in his first year to bring about some excitement, but Mike Bray has taken it to another level. Fitch has been solid all game long, and he's played with points. Yeah, and he looks like he might be limping a little bit as he makes his way back up the floor. You know, Matt Doherty and Tubby Smith might lose more calories and sweat more than their players are in this game. They're really working it over on the sideline. Fitch sizes it up from the baseline, and the rebound underneath to Jackie Manuel. If North Carolina is going to get back in this game within the next three minutes, they need a spurt, and it's got to be created by their defense. Sanders in the game for May right now. Jump hook, no. And again, no second opportunities here in the second half for North Carolina. And there's the experience in the poise. Look at Fitch. Not rushing. He's not normally a point guard. Hawkins out. He's given him an opportunity to play out there on the perimeter. Looks pretty good, though. Hawkins due back in the second semester, which could be for the Indiana games. A couple of games away, Bogans takes a push out on the perimeter. You and I were really impressed with Indiana. Tom Coverdale, what a job he did in that matchup against a tough Steve Blake. And while we have a moment, back to Jay Billis for an update on Gerald Fitch. Jay? Guys, you mentioned that Fitch was limping. Raymond Felton fell on the left ankle of Fitch as he was going after that loose ball, and Fitch got up grimacing. But uh, as you know, he stayed in the game. He'll be fine. It's just a little bit of pain for him right now. And as you know, a difference between pain and injury, Gerald Fitch knows it. I'll tell you this, 95, you know, I talked about it was a great article by Adam Lucas, the local uh, student here at the University of North Carolina uh, website that I read, a great article showing about the history of these two schools. And in 95, they shut down Tony Delk, who had been on fire shooting threes for Rick Pitino to get to the Elite Eight. And when they got to the Elite Eight, they guarded Delk, and they left everybody else alone and shot seven for 36, and they moved on to the Final Four. Kamara called for the foul, and the fans wanted a technical as he slammed the ball down to the court and then it bounced into the seats he avoided the technical but he does pick up
up the foul, which is his fourth, the first Kentucky player in some foul trouble. Yeah, he comes over the back there. There's no way you can't get away with that. Can't get away with that. Can't get away now, right there. Uh, he's a little frustrated with himself. See, the ball got away. He really didn't try yeah, to. You're right. You know, he went to Oak Hill Academy, who we're going to see, by the way, Thursday against LeBron James. And remember this they got five. I talked to Steve Smith yesterday. Five Division I players. So the fact of a guy not winning the state championship like LeBron doesn't mean he can't play because there are a lot of guys in the NBA who haven't won state championships. That's going to be interesting for us to see Thursday night the, on ESPN2. The Tar Heels, even with this free throw, are just four for ten from the line here tonight. They've got time, but they've got a whole lot of scoring they have to do here against Kentucky to get back into this game. Welcome to the kingdom. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Wendy's Bacon Swiss Cheeseburger and Chicken Bacon Swiss. It's better here. That's the big hand of David West getting set. Second team All-American playing like a first team so far. 16th Xavier goes to Cincinnati to take on the Bearcats. Dick knows it's one of the best in the country. That's going to be really a great matchup, Carl. I'll tell you one thing. Jason Maxwell came out. He said, hey, he said he's not as tough as me. We will find out. Sometimes you get Whoa. what you want, said David West. <laughs> That's hey. going to be great, that cross-down shootout. Hey, we'd like to salute the men and women of Keflavik, Iceland, a U.S. Navy exchange who work tirelessly to support our sailors, airmen, and Marines aside to the top of the rock. They're watching today on the AFN, the American Forces Network, and I'm pretty sure, listening to you, you're being heard all through Iceland. Wow. Here today, we welcome them. We thank them for watching. We hope they're enjoying today's telecast of Kentucky and North Carolina the visiting Wildcats have played through some pain and as you said at halftime Tubby Smith changed the game plan he said pounded inside to the big guys and they have done that with great success doing it again right here yeah Marquis Esto has been the difference right on cue domination in that three second area go to the inside that's how they beat a good Gonzaga team too a well coached Gonzaga team by one of the hot names in the game in Mark Few. Belton is fouled by Bogans. Esther, by the way, now with 16 points. All of them in the second half. Carolina has not had an answer. And Matt Doherty, he was worried before the Kansas game. He was worried before the Illinois game. He was worried before this game. Does he have enough size to compete with teams that have two big guys down in the paint? Well, it's very difficult because they're so young. And with young players, you're going to go up and down in terms of your mood swings. And this is a little growing up time now for these kids. Because many of these kids have not seen situations like this where they've been down like this at the losing in Illinois. And now getting beat, it looks like, here at home. Unless a miracle happens, there's still plenty of time. You know what I'd like to do, though, on behalf of all of us here? I want to send our sympathy out to one of our favorite camera guys, Joe Van de Field. Joe's brother, Jim, is working camera two for us today. And they just lost their dad about a week ago. And we want to send our unbelievable sympathy to the family, the Vanderford family. Joe, a big North Carolina fan. His dad used to bleed, used to bleed North Carolina blue. As uh, so many people do here in this area, everybody dressed in Carolina blue here today. They're excited about this team, but as we mentioned, they got a little bit of a slap in the face, a little reality from Bill Self's Illini during the week. They're getting some more here at home from Kentucky. May working hard on the interior. Well, what a great pass by Raymond Felton. Felton and getting foul trouble really hurt the effectiveness of North Carolina and certainly hurt their offensive sets. And Estel inside again. 18 points for Marquise Estel. What a great pass. Ball movement. Nothing like ball movement to lead to a high percentage shot. That's Matt Doherty's hands were tied when the foul trouble happened on Felton and Mary. Felton spins and gets serious? it. Are you serious? They don't realize how good that kid is going to be, my friends. Raymond Felton's got star them all over him from Atlanta, South Carolina. The three freshmen have combined for 46 of Carolina's 70 points today, but will it be enough? Fitch is hacked by McCants. Raymond Felton's got great driving ability. Look at him using a big screen upside. Look at him spinning. Does the 180. Lays it on the glass. Now look at this here. Look at the spin. He protects the basketball. He splits the defensive player. Look at his Barish McLaughlin shorts. A little ballerina. A little ballerina. I think we're on Broadway watching some dancers. A special recruiting class for Matt Doherty. But at the other end, Gerald Fitch in a much different fashion, Dick. Not flashy. 
Just getting it done, piling up the points. He's got a career high today. I think that gives him 21, and Kentucky's back up by 15. I'm really impressed with Kentucky's game plan and their execution here in the second half. And the poise of Fitch and the ability of Bowman to take five to seven shots and the domination of Estelari inside. Tubby Smith's had an excellent game plan, and he has had his kids executed. Felton playing with four, McCants playing with four for North Carolina. Look at the Esther, they should have got an inside goal. The sub, bring it to the big guy. Good help there as McCants came down and knocked the ball away, and now he's got it. We've seen that in North Carolina uniforms a few times by a few special players. You can call their names out. The name may be Carter, it may be Jordan, but they've had their share of high rises. And now they welcome the new one in Mr. McCann's. 22 for Rashad McCants. Wide open look for Hayes, and it's an air ball. But the offensive rebound, Estill puts home his own miss. Too much Estill inside. They can't neutralize the size of Marquise, who was absolutely a David Copperfield disappearing act in the first half. Melvin Scott left alone. Problem for Carolina. Sean May's got to play through fatigue. He's got to play through foul trouble. They don't really have many other big guys who can body up on a guy like Estill. Another problem for North Carolina. Fitch, Bogans, Hayes, Estill, and that whole game. Boy, Fitch runs this nicely, but he misses the shot. See, right now, it's a danger time. They're starting to play a little one-on-one against Illinois, and that's what it will blow out. Illinois, this self is he making a little name down there at the fight of the line. Well, Carolina looks tired right now, Dick, except for Phil. <laughs> yeah, everything but the finish. He'll shoot a couple, but the rest of the Tar Heel guys now look winded. Everybody's standing around watching Mr. Felton. They're like the Kodak man going to snap some pictures for the holidays. Take a look at him right now. Look at the eyes. Look at those eyes. Look at those eyes. He says, I want to take over like I did in high school at Ladder. I want to take over. But it's tough to take over at this level. There he's using the screen, and he's going to come to the inside. He's going to split three guys. He's going to kick it out. I tell you, Raymond Felton is going to be special here. Let's bring in Jay Billis. Jay, you saw Kentucky three games in three days out at Maui. Are, is this a better team now than you saw about a week and a half ago? It's certainly a more patient and poised team with the ability to get the ball inside. And when they concentrate on that and when they hold their ground, this can be an outstanding team. And I agree with Dick. When they get Hawkins back and when they get Antoine Barber back, it gives them even more depth. It gives them more handling ability. And then Gerald Fitch becomes a terrific offensive rebounding guard. As a point guard, he's not able to get to the offensive glass. But as a two-guard, he can. Poor job defensively, Jay. Nobody really takes over. They're really not doing a job on a defensive end in the second half, allowing too much play production out of Kentucky. Melvin Scott with a three. Can't trade baskets, though, Dan. you yep. got to do a job defensively to get some stops. Well, Dick, one of the things that gets lost on people when they talk about the talent of freshmen is how mentally draining it is to play at this level. And I think these freshmen right now are mentally beaten down by a team that is just more experienced and they're a little bit stronger. Maybe in a few years it won't be that case but right now that that's where inconsistency comes with young players i think the problem is very simple jay when you look at the freshman makeup of this team at north carolina for them to win the three freshmen have to be a plus every night against quality competition they don't have any senior support like they do down the road with dante jones and chris duhan and those people that help the freshmen at duke out 13 point lead for kentucky don't forget tomorrow night reese davis trev alberts and mark may have the first breakdown and analysis of each and every bowl game. It's the College Game Day Bowl Selection Special presented by Outback. Find out where your favorite college football team is going to be spending the bowl season. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. You know, it's amazing. We talked about it earlier, guys. 96, 7, and 8, as we said earlier. An overtime loss to Arizona separated from Kentucky in today's day and age of winning three national titles in a row. In fact, in 95, almost went again to the Final Four the year that Jimmy Herrick won it and they beat Arkansas. Hey, mention Arkansas. Any program looking for a guy to turn him around like Bobby Knight did down at Texas Tech? Give a call to Nolan Richardson. I'm telling you, he'll turn a program around. The guy knows how to win. Well, he bounced there for Kentucky to retain possession and Daniels with the dagger. The lefty knocks down a three. He's going to help them off that bench. He gives him versatility. 
Hey, three Kentucky players have at least 20 points today. Fitch with 23, Bogans and Estel each with 20. That's pretty good balance, isn't it? Yep. Belton having to do a lot of things himself here in the second half. No problem. That's incredible. I mean, that's an unbelievable drive right there in traffic, using the left hand. 16 for Felton, 51 for the three Carolina freshmen. But a great shooting from the perimeter by Kentucky today. What I like about Felton is he plays hard every moment he's out there. Every moment he's given everything. He's exhausted, too. Yeah, and the they, all are. Clear. they all are. Carolina could use this break for exams as May bumps into his man. That'll be four on him. They've got about 12, 12 days. days off, and then they play Vermont and... I think Jay made a great point about how mentally draining it is to play at this level. Sean May picks up his fourth. Matt Doherty also talked to us yesterday when we sat down with him about some of the ways they're going to try and deal with all the big guys they're going to see in other teams like this Kentucky team. We have to use our quickness and hopefully create uh, uh, some problems for them on our defensive end by maybe having them start their offense out a little bit farther, getting in passing lanes, pressuring the basketball, um, and then, then hopefully we can get some turnovers that can generate offense for us. We were very good at doing that against Kansas and against Stanford, and we didn't do it against uh, Illinois. They took great care of the basketball. Well, they did it well in the first half, but Kentucky's made it look easy getting the ball inside in the second half. Happy anniversary, honey. Yeah. Minutes from now, Bobby Huggins, Brad Matta, getting a little laugh out of this. This is Huggins' 14th year with the Bearcats. He's all familiar with this rivalry. Matta lost his last year's debut. That's coming up next. Now, those smiles will go away pretty quickly, just like they did here once this game started between two great competitors, Matt Doherty and Tubby Smith. And right now, it's Tubby's Wildcats enjoying a 16-point lead and looking to go to 4-1 and one on the season. The heels on their way, it appears, to drop into 5-2. and two. 10 for 15, shooting threes, yeah. Kentucky. And then when you get that kind of perimeter play, it's going to really assist your interior as well. They've got great balance today, perimeter and inside. Manuel steps in, misses the jumper, made with a putback, no. And Daniels comes up with a rebound. He's been very active, Dan, yeah. his first game back. This has been one of his stars right now with the ball in his hands. Very st steady and very solid here this afternoon. Don't forget Kentucky at Tulane Tuesday night on ESPN. Daniels again, very active as you mentioned. He's hungry, man. He wants to put that Kentucky blue. Hey, I'll tell you, you look at those two uniforms. If you don't get thrilled and you don't reflect back on what happened in the Adolph Rupp areas and the Joby Hall. By the way, happy birthday, Joe. 74 now, about a week ago. I can't believe he's 74. Estel corrals the rebound, and now Kentucky's going to be nice and patient with this big lead. Managing the clock right now, Bogans, wow, improved player. Jerry Tipton's right, who wrote a column about him. The tip of the Cincinnati Xavier game coming up momentarily here on ESPN, and then Arizona and San Diego State tonight at 9 Eastern. Mark Jones and Larry Conley, former Kentucky outstanding player. Larry and him are going to enjoy that game to press down. Shoot on his Hayes knocks down a trifecta. And Kentucky on the verge of a 100-point afternoon. What a performance offensively. They have really executed, been very efficient. Floor. It's all over now for Matt Doherty and the Tar Heels. They're going to suffer their second consecutive defeat. Uh, what, you know, some pain now and maybe some gain later on for these young players. Well, you know, pain, we talked about pain. We talked about how Tommy Amica now, former teammate of Jay Billis, is going through heck now. 0-5 with Michigan. they got a date right now with Duke down the road. And I'll tell you one thing, Tommy Amica, like Matt Doherty, you are at great schools like North Carolina and Michigan. You can get fat quickly as Xavier Cincinnati coming up next. Already Tommy has committed Courtney Sims from out of the Boston area. He's got a kid, Deion Harris, from out of the Detroit area. Area and we'll have a top 10 recruiting class next year. Oh, look at the uh, weather, man. Look at the weather outside. <laughs> Makes you long for Sarasota, oh, huh? Yeah, I'm going to be there tonight Boy, for dinner. They had that terrible ice storm here just a few days ago. Power lines down. Hundreds of thousands of people in this area. 
without Here. power. Look, look, it's right outside wow. where this happened. And even the Dean Dome was dark for a few hours on Thursday, but they're starting to try to put this all back together again. Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes <laughs> Santa Claus right down Santa Claus Lane. Are you going to buy me a Christmas gift? Of course I, I am. went shopping yesterday. Yeah. I went shopping for my buddy Billy Packer, and I bought him two tickets to see, the, to see our guy LeBron James play. You know. I went out and bought him two tickets. You're, you're not being, you're not playing nice. You're not playing, <laughs> playing nice. Santa Claus. Have, have some holiday spirit, will you? I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> I am. I'm buying you a nice gift, too. I'm not buying you a comb, either. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the, our, our daily comb reference. Uh, Preston LeMaster, Bernard Cote, Brandon Stockton into the game. Matt Heisenmuttle into the game as well as Tubby Smith empty suspension. Now Rashad McCants is down and injured for Carolina. Oh, man. Oh, wow. 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 What an 18-point deficit. This is not pretty to look at. They're one player away from really being very average, basically, in terms of the fact of they don't have much depth at all, North Carolina, and especially this kid. I mean, this is uh, like the special, special, the whole eyes looking on that court. This is more than just a situation here, down 18. There's a lot of concern. He has already dealt with a sprained left shoulder and an injured right wrist already in this young season as he went tumbling to the floor. He is now sitting up, but still in an obvious pain. One good thing is they got those 12 days off now, and that certainly comes at the right time. Well, now you can add a left ankle to the left shoulder and the right wrist. This is one banged up kid who is still playing at an extremely high level right now. I'll tell you, those 12 days off are really going to be welcomed by these young kids who now, their sidekick really goes to a little situation where, remember, when you talk to McCants, May, and also Felton, I'll bet they have not been in situations where they've lost two games like this that they did to Illinois and Kentucky. And that's going to be important for them how they handle that. And an impressive performance by Kentucky, as we mentioned a couple of times. Get Cliff Hawkins back for the second semester. Get Antoine Barber back in about a month from a broken hand as you see McCann's trying to deal with the pain. Tubby Smith, a year removed from, by Kentucky standards, a difficult season, team turmoil, suspensions and transfers and so forth. It looks like this is the kind of team he likes. A lot of kids who are going to share the basketball, work hard, and he's a great game coach, as you've spoken about. Well, you know, the bottom line is they got chemistry. they got yeah. a better feeling for each other right now. As Donna, I got a kiss from Donna today. You saw me get a kiss from her in a hotel lobby. There's his beautiful wife right here, Donna. They got a son, Brian, who's now a star at Lexington Catholic, who led him to who led him to the state championship last year, Lexington Catholic. I don't think you're going to see Brian wearing a Kentucky uniform, and I think that would be smart. I think the pressure of playing for your dad in that situation is so unbelievable. I know Saul, who had really got the sixth winning this player in terms of wins during the tenure while he was at Kentucky. Kentucky took so much heat. It was incredible. Yep. Saw in the uh, NBDL right now trying to take it to the next level. You know, LeMaster on the court right now. Remember that name? His dad played at Kentucky during the 60s. I was at a banquet recently where I spoke, and his dad was present. There he is. There he is shooting. Yeah. Wanted to shoot like his dad. Make that three. And yes, an impressive what performance, performance by Kentucky. Huh? 98 to 81. The Tar Heels have now lost two in a row. Don't forget, tonight, 9 Eastern, Arizona, San Diego State. Our thanks to Dick Vitale, Jay Billis, and the whole crew here at the Dean Dome. Another great game is coming your way right now. They have just tipped it off in Cincinnati, the Crosstown shootout between the Bearcats and the Musketeers. Let's send you there and join Mark Jones and Larry Conley. Guys, take it away.